live and now from Fox, I am Andy Mack. Of course, uh, weather postponed some of the controlled demolition, controlled explosions there at the Francis Scott Key Bridge at the site there of that collapse from yesterday till today. We're going to have to wait another day as they are announcing that this delay is going to take one more day. And for safety reasons, the controlled demolition to remove the bridge section resting on the deck of the dolly is tentatively moved back till Monday, May 13th at 5 o'clock Eastern due to weather conditions producing lightning within 10 miles of the dolly, remaining daylight, rising tide, multitude of factors. The United Command has moved the demolition till Monday. I do want to bring in right now to the conversation friend of the program, Dr. Sal Mercogliano, maritime historian at Campbell University. We appreciate your time here on Live Now from Fox. And there has to be a lot of factors that go into this to make sure it is safe when the controlled demolition happens, whether it was a fact today what's our initial reaction and what are we expecting to happen tomorrow now yeah it's not too surprising Andy yeah. thanks for having me uh, there was a lot of weather going on I mean you had personnel up in bucket cranes uh, on high lift jacks and then the weather came in so really difficult for them to do an operation in that type of weather so they're resetting for tomorrow uh, they got a, a couple of factors have to be in play here one of the big ones is a low tide so they need to do this on the tide going down uh, obviously, they need to ensure that they have a good safety area around there. So they want to do this during day. They don't want anyone getting close to the ship during this explosion. And of course, they have to be prepared on board the ship. Uh, this type of explosion is not going to be a large order of magnitude explosion by any means, but there is the potential for some shrapnel to come that way. So ship's crew got to be prepared. They have to be hunkered down and there may be issues on the ship after the explosion. So they want to be able to reassess this in the daylight. Yeah, and this truss is leaning heavily against against the dolly and they can't really do cuts because they'd potentially have to do multiple at the same time. Can you describe maybe what's going to happen and how big of a movement is this? Because we've seen it since that March 26th collapse. They're trying to get piece by piece out of the way. How big of a, a moment is this for this whole collapse in the waterway in general in that area? Yeah, this is the largest single piece of the bridge that's intact. And obviously, because so, if it's intact, it actually has some structural rigidity to it. And ideally, what they would love to do is be able to cut it into small pieces and remove it. The problem is that takes a lot of time. The other thing is, as you cut that structure, because of the way it's leaning against the vessel, it becomes weak. And so you, you can't do multiple cuts at the same time with crews and people. So instead, they've decided to do these pressure cuts on them, these kind of tension cuts. And then they're going to use explosives and blow it in a, in a series of explosions, which will almost be, you know, unfathomable by us. We won't really be able to see it very well. But what's going to happen is that bridge is going to collapse into the channel. And most importantly, the structure that's on the vessel, the dolly, will fall off the vessel, off the port side, the left side of the vessel into the water and then over the course of probably another two days they'll remove whatever is leaning up against the dolly they'll have to remove the large roadway that's across the bow and then they can start talking about moving dolly out yeah that was going to be my next question about potentially how quickly can dolly get out of the way to kind of open this up is it going to be two days or depending on how it goes with the controlled explosions could it take even longer yeah, it's optimistic. It really depends on how the bridge falls and how what type of structure they have to remove. They've got to remove that big section. Remember, there's a four-lane steel and concrete roadway lying across the bow. And what they're really worried about is that bow is sitting on the mud right now. And they have to be worried about all that extra weight on the very end of the vessel. The, the end of the vessel is not designed to hold that much weight. So they're going to have to get that off. And then they'll have to take the dolly once it starts floating. They don't want literally the bow to fall off. They'll take it over probably to the Seagirt terminal. This is the terminal where the ship originated its voyage from and start taking containers off and assessing the damage. I, I have a firm belief that the bow of the dolly has been really severely damaged more than we think. Hmm. And so there's going to be a real question about what happens to that vessel afterwards. That is very, very interesting. I put up some video from the Army Corps of Engineers potentially just kind of depicting what could be happening tomorrow. Uh, and you mentioned some of this being stuck in the mud there at the bottom. You also mentioned the tides. How big of a factor and maybe how big of a difference is high tide versus low tide in that region? They really want the low tide because that's where the bridge is probably at its most exposed part and that's why they want to do this. You only have about a foot, foot and a half range tide here. So we're not talking about a lot of issues here but the other issue too is when you do the explosion and that bridge does fall away, you have to worry about dolly shifting. And so they got to be 
prepared for that. So they want to be able to expose as much of the bridge as possible when the explosion takes place. They want to make sure there's no damage further to the dolly than what happens. Plus, again, you may have some shrapnel damage that can go into some of those containers. So you have to worry about some leaking and maybe some uh, penetration of the containers. That's why the ship's crew is still on board. Remember, this ship is still fully operating. And so they need them on board. You'll see tugs in the area, fire and rescue uh, craft standing by. So it's a lot to coordinate. Yeah, and I wanted to get into that because those crew, those 21 people there on the, the ship will remain there. They will have to be hunkered down away from some of these explosions. But was there a decision or in your eyes to keep them on board versus maybe getting them off? Is that what, what happens there and maybe how far away from the explosions are they trying to be? Yeah, I think, I mean, you'll have the engine crew in the very furthest aft part of the vessel. They'll be, you know, the crew will not be explo exposed to the explosion, so they'll have, you know, dozens of containers between them and steel. So I don't think you're going to have a big issue with that. I think the question is going to be is making sure that vessel is stable at the time and to make sure that there's no further damage to the vessel. The crew has been undergoing a lot. Obviously, this sh ship was scheduled to leave Baltimore, go all the way to Sri Lanka, halfway around the world. Uh, when the FBI came on board, they confiscated the crew's phones. They've been given replacement phones so they can maintain contact with home. But I, I am sure this crew is looking for an opportunity to not see that bridge laying on their bow anymore and to get away from being the center of attention in Baltimore. Yeah, the center of attention and also kind of a big speed bump for that very integral port. Maybe how quickly will they get back up to speed or at close to back up to speed as possible? Well, let me be clear, the U.S. Coast Guard and the Army Corps of Engineers have done a phenomenal job. The, the idea that they got the limited channel, the 35-foot draft channel open, they were able to allow most of the vessels that were stuck in the harbor to get out. Uh, you can foresee that they are going to go into high gear to get that span of the bridge out of the way as quickly as they can. They're optimistic by the end of May to have the channel open for 45-foot draft. That'll allow the larger bulk carriers, the coal carriers, to come in and out. You'll almost be at a resumption of normal trade in and out of the port of Baltimore. We're talking about in, in less than two months' time, which is a phenomenal effort that's being done here by everyone and everyone involved. Yeah, that is uh, very impressive, just to say the least. From March 26th, it's just going to take two months for the collapse and potentially the removal of that Francis Scott Key Bridge. Uh, Dr. Sal, anything else that you'd like to add? Anything else that you'd like to note uh, about what's coming up tomorrow for our viewers? No, I think we're still on a hold, too. I mean, we're not 100% sure. Obviously, there's a lot of issues that are at play here. So this is not quite, uh, you know, going to be rocket science here where we go off on a set thing. As we know, there are always delays. Weather is a big issue. Uh, they want to ensure that everything is, is in place. You can't go back and do this a second time. So they need to make sure that all is in place. I do think, however, what you're going to see is a lot more impressive than what we saw in the Army Corps of Engineers uh, graphic there, because this is a large structure, and this structure is going to come tumbling down and there's a lot of dynamic forces at play here and I, I think this is the safest method that the Army Corps of Engineers and everyone involved has to get that ship out and reopen the channel in the fastest and safest way possible. Yeah, like you said, it is tentatively set there for tomorrow at 5 o'clock Eastern. It won't be very visible. As they said, it might sound like a firework or something, but still a very important point is this is the largest uh, singular structure there remaining on the dolly. All right, Dr. Sal, we appreciate your time here on Live Now from Fox. Thanks for having me, Andy. All right, thank you so much. All right, I do want to put up this tweet right now here on Live Now from Fox from our Fox 5 team there on the ground saying the plan to remove the 500-foot portion of the bridge resting on the dolly via explosives delayed another day. It was supposed to be Saturday. Weather delays moved to today. Weather delays now. It's tomorrow. Weather looks clear, at least early forecast there in Baltimore. All right, I'm Andy Mack. We'll be right back.